Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to 45 Degree Sailing, uh, 45 Degree Weekly Live. My name's Nick and I am coming to you very live from the absolutely beautiful Stadigrad with the sun setting and I am on top of uh, a location we call Hidden House. Um, you might be able to figure out where it is based on the view, but um, uh, this is Hidden House. This is very good friends of ours that run accommodation apartments here in Stadigrad, and they are just awesome. And this is the, if you, if you rent the top floor apartment, uh, oh, here go the church bells. Could it get any more picturesque right now? <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to have to, you have to stand by for the church bells. Hang on a second. I don't know how loud they are. Um, anyone let me know in the comments and everything if my sound is coming through all good, please. Uh, where are my comments? They should be, oh my gosh, I don't know how long these bells are going to go on for. Uh, <laughs> they kind of, they kind of do that. Um, let's see, we shall see. All right. <laughs> okay, we got some likes there, we got some people comment, all right. Uh, 25 minutes, what have we got? 25 minutes and counting. Excellent, so you must have said that a little while ago, uh, John. Oops, I'm just gonna get my, my things all right here. It's not easy to just set yourself up on a rooftop, you know what I mean? Countdown, I got Anna's there. Love the rooftop scene, excellent, thank you guys. Mine is in my hand. I don't know what you're referring to there. I might have to look at the other comments to understand what that means, Gavin. All right, but probably a drink, I'd imagine. Love the palm tree and the marina in the background. Yeah, yeah, welcome to my beautiful view tonight. Uh, not bad, great view. Like, I mean, I, effectively, I could probably just go all night just with you guys. Um, ah, there we go, sound is nice, it's good, sound is good. Okay, sound is okay, okay, bells are fine, all right. Here we are. Now, I'm completely honest, I'm really trying to do something quite special here, but I don't think I'm going to pull it off. I've, I've, everything else is set up, but it's just, does anyone ever have a problem with these SD card readers? Um, because, ah, <laughs> oh, anyway, I had it all planned. I had a, I, I just, I, I popped the drone up, I did a drone flight, and I was going to pretend that, that was a live drone flight, and that here I am waving at you. But anyway, I can't, I can't obviously pull that off right now. So, okay, cool. So here we are, we've got, what have we got? We've got 12 people watching. Uh, again, I've got some comments there. Blair's just showing up as well, bonjour. All right, and um, welcome to our 45D Weekly. Now this is, <laughs> what is this one? All right, um, this one is export process. That's what it was, so welcome. Live from Stardegard on a Khvar Island, all right, right behind me here. And um, this week's live is understanding the export process, okay? Now, um, we are on holiday for a few days, Mahina and I, we are over here at Hidden House just enjoying ourselves. Um, it's our nine year anniversary, our wedding anniversary coming up on Wednesday. So this is our little breakaway to, <laughs> to get some time to edit some videos, to be honest, <laughs> interestingly enough. So uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at at the moment. And um, and we're just, I've just got to drive everything. So sorry if I'm not always looking at the camera, but that's why I've got the the good view. Also tonight's live stream being, um, being heavily detail orientated. I don't want to get anything wrong. So I've written my notes out and I will be reading some of them sometimes to get the words absolutely correct. So welcome. Um, and I think basically without that, we'll, uh, yeah. We'll just get onto it. So this is particularly for those people that are, are for non-EU residents, okay, that, uh, that they're persons that are buying a yacht and they're going to reflag it as a non-EU country flag and then they want to avoid paying the VAT, okay? So as normal live stream style, please bring your questions, bring your comments, drop them in there. Uh, if you're new to the stream, um, say hi, tell us where you're, tell us where you're watching from. Uh, I've got a, got a few uh, regulars here, which is great to see everyone. Thank you very much for supporting. We got wow, well, we got seventeen. We got seventeen on at the moment. So I want to see some want to see some new new names and faces. That would be amazing. Um, I might even need to bring my comments over to this next window on my computer here, so I can really really zone in on everything that's going along here. Uh, Dawn, first, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm get, we're going to be a few nine years. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Uh, this, this is all great. I can't, I can't, unfortunately, I love it. I can't put it on. John Applegate from Dallas, Texas. Hi, John. Thank you for joining us. This is great. Um, excellent. Excellent. So, um, all right. 
Uh, without any further ado, let's go to the cutscene and we'll get this started. Okay, so as previously talked about, this, welcome back. Um, understanding the export process. Okay, so recently I have performed two exports uh, just this year, okay, um, and one was via Montenegro, so we sailed down to Montenegro and back, uh, and the other one was via Neum, which is in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, which is the closest non-EU country because it shares a tiny little bit of coastline uh, with Croatia, and you can, as it turns out, export a boat into there. But there is a few things, okay, because the situation has changed. All right, the situation has grossly, it's actually beautifully bright with this sun. I'm going to lose it soon, but I'm really enjoying it right now. Uh, situation has changed. Okay, so previously, um, the uh, you could do a declaration of export. You could check out, you get your crew list. You go to 12 nautical miles from the farthest island. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and then you come back in and you're pretty much done. Great. That's awesome. So uh, it's changed now. It's changed. So um, for one, we'll talk about the 12 nautical miles uh, because it's not just sailing 12 miles out from wherever you are. Okay, so it's 12 nautical miles from the nearest land. Uh, let's see if I've got a, a good picture of that that I can show just how far it is. 12 nautical miles. There we go. So that is looking. It's not a, not a zoom view. Sorry. Uh, oh, there we go. It's a video. So it's a, it's that's how far out it is. So it's about 45 or 50, no, 55 miles just to get out to that 12 nautical mile mark. Okay. So from from where we are, this this is going to come into play again uh, in a little bit. So I'll I'll get rid of it now. But um, that's that's what we're talking about. There's that little there's that little hook in there that gives us the 12 nautical mile mark. Um, so that's that's really important to to know that you're not just going out for a couple of hours. It, um a couple of hours, little little tutu out and um and then and driving back in. It's actually a lot more than that. Okay, so um 12 nautical miles. So now why has it changed? It's changed because of Schengen. Okay. Croatia's now entered the Schengen, and although that shouldn't really change it, it now puts Croatia as the bordering out of the Schengen bordering country uh for, for EU Schengen countries. So now it is like the, the edge of Schengen going down to Montenegro. And so they've, they've tightened up on things. Uh, they've really, really gotten stuck into it. Um, and, and things have just started changing. And because it's so fresh and it's so new, uh, no one really knows how it works. And they've done very few. I, I imagine, because I did mine uh, in January, I'd imagine I would have been one of the first exports to be done in 2023, uh, those two. And then, um, yeah, so th things have changed. So uh, let's hit some info just to catch up, um, to catch people up. Um, so as it is written, I'm going, I'm going to read this. As it is written, VAT tax on a yacht in the European Union. Okay, all EU residents who own a boat, I'm just going to check that I'm not muted. No, I just, I, I do that sometimes. Um, all EU residents who own a boat and use the boat within the EU are required to pay a 20% value added tax VAT which will hike up the sales price considerably, obviously. Um, it's important not to underestimate the complexity of the VAT on vessels, especially for higher value yachts. This is, this is, this is really big. Um, and it's a matter, of course, to check, check into an EU country. Um, when you sell the boat, you'll be required to provide evidence of the VAT paid. Okay. For non-EU residents, the laws state that they are permitted to use privately owned yachts in the Mediterranean under a TA, a temporary admission, okay? So for up to 18 months without being liable to pay VAT, which is what this is all about, okay? So if you want to cruise the Mediterranean uh, for a few months after taking possession, uh, you can temporarily import the boat for up, up to 18 months, or if, if it's already here, what, that's how we go. So this live stream is really for those that, uh, that fall under this or create this situation, which is a lot of the people that I've been dealing with at the moment. So, um, if you want to cruise the med for some time, you want to spend some time cruising the med, or you, um, uh, or you, uh, want to, you know, really want to spend some time here, whatever it is. Um, if you're in the EU, you've got to manage that time frames and everything. So, um, we're going to talk about reflagging the yacht and and how it goes. Okay, so if you purchase a boat, uh, so I've got some someone at the moment purchasing one in Poland uh, that I'm dealing with, and they'll get it 
they're actually coming in by truck. There's different laws about that, which is good, but then it'll go to Slovenia, etc. Um, then it'll be a non-EU VAT pay because it's coming out of a company. It's been working commercially. Um, and they want to spend some time in and around here. So they'll have to change the flag first. So first change the flag to an outside EU country, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, or this a lot of the ones we're dealing with, the US, whatever it is. And then you can look at doing a declaration of export. Okay. Um, so here is how it goes. In order to export from Croatia, you need registration of the yacht, okay, um, uh, from the outside of the EU, okay. So you'd want to change this before attempting to export, okay. Get it, get it all finalized before attempting to export. I, anyway, I won't tell that story just yet. Um, insurance, you need your insurance. It's all pretty standard stuff. Uh, you need a vignetta, okay. A vignetta is a cruising permit. Um, a cruising permit is, and it's best to make sure. So a cruising permit is like it's the it's like paying your highway toll to be in the country. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a visa for the boat to be in the country. And, um, and that's not just, uh, not just, what am I trying to say there? It's not, it's not for every country. You don't have to do this for every country. But you need a cruising permit or a vignetta for the certain one you're in. So when you're in Croatia, you have to have a vignetta. Montenegro, Bosnia, these ones around here. Um, sailing through the Schengen is a little bit different because you just have to have a valid vignetta for the boat. Um, now, uh, you'll need that. You'll also need your skipper's license, you'll need a crew list, and then you'll need this, you'll need a declaration of export. So this is the, the paperwork and all the formality to actually export the boat and say, right, I'm making a declaration that I'm gonna export this boat out of the EU, so I don't wanna pay the VAT. Now, you need an agent for this. This is something that people possibly don't, uh, don't see, but you need an agent for this. Um, so, you need to hire an agent that's going to that's going to manage this export. It's very hard to deal with. I, I don't deal with it myself through for my clients that do it for all this. I hire an agent because they've got to fill in all the paperwork. It's all in Croatian. They know the ins and outs, and they're going to help with the whole process for you. And depending on where you, it, it's different in every port that you're know, exiting port you're going to do it in. So you just got to. It's really good to have someone on the ground. So you need an agent. Now what you're going to have to do is give that agent. Um, uh, you have to give that agent the, all this details and, and you know make a plan with them. Okay, so you have to give them your passport and document for the for the person that's um that's exporting the boat. Now, if you're exporting it, uh, dual citizenship's a tricky one. Okay, so you really need to. Remember, I, I really want to stress right now. I've actually written this written this out, so I need to stress this uh, a couple of times. The information that I'm giving you here today is for general purposes only. All right, and it should not be relied upon as legal or tax advice or VAT, okay, you need to follow up on your own research and details and get it from the factions and the, and the um, organizations that you're dealing with, the countries that you're in everything. This is just my experiences and my advice as I can give it to you, okay, for general purposes. It is not legal advice. I'm just going to throw that in there. <laughs> Be very, very careful of that one. Um, okay, uh, it looks like a stream health good. I just got to double check all that. No, all good. Okay, so... Um, where was I? Because I went down to that that little piece of that. Okay, so yeah, give them give them passports and everything. One thing I was annoyed to find out is that you must have two crew members on board. If you're going to do an export um, uh, movement, and that you must have two crew members on board. They won't let you do it on your own. So you need your second crew member's um, passport or documentation. All right. You'll also need your registration papers for your boat. Makes sense. Um, really, yeah. If you can have originals, that's great. I'm going to give you my experience that I've done two without originals. It was a challenge. It was a challenge based on a number of different things, but you, original papers would be great, um, but at least high quality copies and anything like that. Um, uh, you need your cruising permit, the vignetta, you'll need to send all of the stuff, the insurance, send this to the agent so they can start dealing with it. Now, they're gonna have to go through the process of, um, and either you or them or the combination of both, go through the process of uh, going to the harbour master's office and developing the crew list because you need a crew list for this. Uh, it's all, it all hinges around the crew list. Um, make sure that your yacht is yacht name and information is on there. It's often really good to put your hull number on this crew list on this in this export um, thing, uh, just to make it all match up. Especially if you're changing names of your boat, just be be very careful. Maybe just think about the timing of changing names of your boat. That can cause a bit of an issue. All right, it's also best to have 
old registration, you don't have to have old registration, okay, the deletion certificate from the previous one, uh, the bill of sale and the final invoice, this is important, um, have your VHF license and your skipper's license and uh, if you also have your certificate for the radio, uh, VHF radio for the boat, your call sign and your MMSI, uh, have all that on board, okay. If you can, have the VAT status of the yacht. Now, you're kind of doing this to declare VAT status um, and you want what's called a T2L or what's an MRN document. Now, an MRN document looks like this, okay? I'm not going to share that too much because that's got some information on it. I thought about putting a screenshot up, but I'm not going to because of exactly that and having a blank and all that. Um, now, let me know if you're if you're all with me. It says I've got 18 people watching. I haven't had a comment in a little while, so it's good to see some interaction come up. So just let me let me know if I'm getting way far ahead or uh, if uh, just questions, 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 throw them up. But otherwise, I'll just blurt all this out, and you can you can ask me questions after. So you need you need something like that for the VAT status. So that's effectively what you're trying to get. You're trying to get this. Uh, I have exported the boat declaration. This 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 T T. T2L or MRN um, document. So that's that there. Uh, crew lists. So crew lists are going to come in, in different shapes and sizes, like this particular one here. Uh, let me just switch cameras here to make this a bit easier for me to do. Okay, so this this is a crew list coming out of Dubrovnik. It's a Croatian one. All right, so that, that looks like that. And that's got all the official stamps on it and dates and everything. But that's the stuff you're going to need from the Harbour Master and then from Customs Immigration. Um, this is the one that came out of Montenegro. Looks a little bit different. Um, and then what I said before is your vignetta. Now a Croatian vignetta looks like this. It's just a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper with a receipt and a stamp and everything on. Okay. Um, so uh, the vignetta, you just need to connect all this. And I mean, the like I, I have a bag for every client that looks like this uh, so that I can take all of their documents and have it all in, all in one place. And I would highly, highly suggest something like that. Um, all good from John. He said, do you think the process would be different? for a boat owned by a limited liability company? Okay, good question. Um, and I will go into that right now. Effectively, no, like a lot of the boats that I'm dealing with are coming out of charter. So they've been in, um, in an LLC or, you know, or, a deal, or they've been in a company either here in Croatia or a German company or something like that. Once, they've, um, once you get your deletion certificate um, and you, you get the deregistration, all right, and, all, and then you do your new registration, uh, as long as that's all cleared with the final invoice and it all in line, it shouldn't really matter. Um, still here, enjoying the ins and outs of the European bureaucracy. <laughs> bureaucracy, yeah, yeah, totally get it, totally get it. How's this? Oh, I love this place, I love this place. Do you want to see the sunset? I'm going to show you, I don't care. I'm going to show you. Here's the sunset. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just, just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, I digress. Back to the uh, back to the video now. Okay. Um, hey, and if I've got 18 watching, 15 watching, something like that, if you haven't liked the video, please, I'd love for you to hit that like. It helps with the algorithm. Uh, the comments are great and all that, but slap, slap a few likes on there. That, that really helps me out. Um, okay. That was, I know you want to see more of the view and less of me, but that comes into play a little bit later. Um, okay. Getting on to there. So, Best to have all these sorts of things, okay? Um, also, one really, really good thing to have is the hull rub, okay? If you don't know what this is, each hull should have a stamp and an etched in hull number on it, a couple of numbers or a whole string of numbers, usually on the um, aft starboard outside of the hull or something like that. Um, and you, and you put, a, put a bit of paper over it and you get your pencil and you, and you, and you, you rub over it like this. You have a hull, hull rub like that um, and a photo of it and all that and then know exactly where it is clean that bit of the boat because they may want to come on and check your hull number. Had that happened on the first export this year. Um, and on that note, also had on that first export, have a tidy ship, all right? Be very organized, be tidy. Um, don't have a whole cabin loaded up with stuff because it's highly likely, especially in the off season when I do these things, your boat's gonna get searched, all right? At some stage during this process, your boat will likely get searched. Um, I actually got searched three times in the last month and a half. Anyway, so have a tidy ship. Make sure it's organized and tidy and don't rush this sort of thing. Um, and also with your agent, you'll probably get a time, given a time to say, hey, be on the quarantine dock at this time. 
um, and have copies of everything, all right? Have all your originals here and have your copies here. And if you want, like I did, have copies of copies so you can just say, here, take those. Um, and, and that's actually really helpful when it comes down to, when it went to Montenegro, that was really helpful. And then know your operating times of customs, police, and the harbor master for the entry and exit ports you're going into. Um, then the last thing is you need to qualify, okay, uh, for this export process. You told me the bells are all right, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, Anna said, can you simply step by step where you went and what you did for one of the exports? I will. I'll go over that soon. I'm just going to keep covering what you need first. Um, so you need to qualify. Now, qualifying means you must do the declaration of export within 90 days of the final invoice. This is really important. If you do not, um, if you do not get it done within 90 days, you could be liable to pay the VAT and you're, you're kind of just stuffed. So within 90 days of that invoice, I'd do it as fast as possible. Um, you need to do this. So get the declaration done within 90 days. So that's a qualifying thing. All right. So here's the process. Anna, Anna jumped, jumped in on me. I love it. I love it. I love it. So can I explain the step by step? Yes. Okay, so, I didn't get a drink. I'd love a drink. I wonder, I wonder if someone in this building is watching the live stream and could deliver. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> okay, um, she's probably not watching the live stream. Anyway, so first, agent. Get in touch with the agent. Um, if you need help getting in touch with an agent, get in touch with me and I can help you with that. Get in touch with the agent, make a plan, okay? Dates, times, all this sort of thing ports you're going to use. Um, choose the route uh, and the port of the exit and the entry, okay? So you know, know it's like that. Because um, it, can, it can take a lot longer than you think. Um, when, I, when I said this one, I think I had photo. Where's my photo for this one? No, it's not there. Oh. Um, it's, like, it's like just knowing how long this could take. So it's not 12 nautical miles. This was how far I had to sail to do one of the exports this year, okay? 106.3 nautical miles, that's 17 hours and 38 minutes. That's a big trip. Was a pain in the... Where's my... I'm not fast enough. All right, it's a real pain. So, um, yeah, really, really, really just... Ugh, okay, Um uh, what percent is VAT? Someone said um, it's either 20 or 25 percent, depending on. Um, I, I've seen different stuff read, and I actually, it's 25 percent here in Croatia um, for goods and services and everything like that. I would actually have to check exactly what it is on a on a on a boat. So for that one there, um, but I'm trying not to give specific details on stuff because it can change and make this a bit more evergreen. Um, so. Um, know your know your roots. So that was that was part of our process. Then, um, possible yacht search. Okay, so you're then going to uh, agents going to hopefully do most of this for you. Okay, so you're going to have to go to the harbour master and get a crew list and 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 in permission you know permission to leave exit from the harbour master crew list. And you have to go to the police. Okay, and check out, give your passports to customs, um, and then get the crew list signed off and cleared by customs along with the declaration of export. And the agent's there to do this for you, there to help you through with this. Uh, in the most recent one I did, I did this out of split, and the agent did the harbour master exit, the police and the customs all for me, and I met him on the quarantine dock. Um, and then went in with my passports and signed the bit of paper and waited for 15 minutes while they did the thing. Um, and then and then I could go from there. So he did all that. Whereas at the other end, I've got to do it all. Um, both other ends, I've got to do it all. Uh, so then get the crew list done by customs, etc. Talk with the agent. You may... Um, your, you may export and do the crew list based on the hull number. So we talked about that before. So have the have the hull number and the rub ready just in case the name's changing or anything's, anything's a bit different. Um, then you're going to possibly have a yacht search. Okay, at that point, customs or police may choose to come on board the yacht and say, you know, we're just going to have a look around or whatever, uh, open some drawers. So then from there, okay, we're done, signed papers. Okay, now I've got a exit crew list. Um, I've got an exit crew list and I've got, a plan that says I'm going to international waters and then I'm going to this port next. So on your crew list, it always has an exit port and a next port. It doesn't mean that if something goes wrong, you can't duck into another one, but this is this is how it rolls. So then you exit and you head in the most 
direct route to where you're going. So if it's to international waters, you're the most direct route. So you can see um, on that shot, I'll bring it up again. Um, on that shot, where is it there? On that shot, that's a straight line out from split. Um, I can't, can I point to this? <laughs> from, from split down uh, past Kla, through the split gates, past Kla, straight out beyond Vies and to this point uh, for this, this 12 nautical miles. And if I play, is that gonna sh shoot that one away? There we go. Um, as you can see, when I zoom in on this, if I zoom in on this, pretend like I'm doing it now, I can actually do that, but I'm not going to. Um, that was our position when we were right out there. So you're gonna go straight out there. Now, when you get out there, see that pink marker? That's just, in this particular spot in Croatia, that's the marker on Navionics that shows you the 12 nautical miles. And so it's actually just this little horn that sticks out that you can get outside of 12 nautical miles. So we went out there and I was very close to it here. Now, when you get out here, okay, you wanna get out and you wanna get into, into that area um, and, and you can see how that was, uh, I'm measuring there from the closest point to land. So that's what that 12, 12 nautical miles is. And then it's from, I've got from other islands and stuff over there. So get out to that point. Now, once you're out there, um, you wanna take some photos. Get, get into that position, um, take some photos of your GPS, your GPS location, all right, uh, visually and of the actual lat and long. Um, and, and maybe of one of your other units. So take these photos, this is just evidence and stuff. Now they should have you on radar or AIS and all this. They should be able to see exactly where you've gone. And you take this as a bit of evidence, okay? If you're in the daytime, then obviously you can see there's you know very little array or you're away from the water. We were pitch black at night, it was 11, just gone past midnight I think at this point when I was out here. And we had fog forecast to roll in, that's great. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, take those pictures and um, and get it all sorted. And so then from there, the most direct route to my port that I was going to was now like this, a long way up to Nelm. Now, um, so basically straight in, straight in heading up there. I'm now, I'm now checked out of a country. Now you should be flying your quarantine flag, your Q flag, throw it in your, um, in the comments if you know what the Q flag looks like. <laughs> Um, that would be a great one to see who's who's watching, who's paying attention. So if you know what the Q flag looks like, put that in the comments now. Um, you need to be flying the Q flag. And I'll go a step further there. I should wait for all the comments to come in, but I'll go a step further. Um, next one, if you know where to fly it, tell me what, what flags you should be flying on the boat, because this is really important as well. Um, and then straight into your, into your location. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's that's really important. Um, someone else is watching, Peter Ashworth. Nice, great info. Thanks, Peter. Good to have you here. Um, so wait for those comments to come in. John Hubert's going yellow. Okay, who's going to back him up on that? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, let's get rid of that that image there just for now. Not that one. That one there. Okay, so. We're now heading into the to the next port of entry. Now, I when I did this process, I went from there and I went straight in as I was directed, straight to now. Okay, I've been out to international waters and I go straight to my port that I see them going into. Okay, Graham T, he's got it, he's on it. Yellow starboard spreader. Uh, yeah, so yellow starboard side of the mast. It doesn't have to be on your spreader, um, but it has to be starboard side of the mast for sure. Um, and usually you put it up close to your first spreader on a yacht. So, um, yep, and then the other flag you should be flying then is, of course, your um, registered flag Registered flag on the stern uh, or where, wherever, wherever you put it on. I put it on the rear stays on the charter yacht, so you have the flagpole on the back. Um, but your courtesy flag needs to fly above that forward star of the mast. Um, now, I went straight into Nelm. Uh, oh, and I've got, a cool, I've got a cool video for you. Check this out. Or do I? Install lights. Oh, where is it? Oh, come on, I had this all set up. Oh, I'll find it. Um, country of registration on the back. Oh, okay, here we, here we go. We've got some, got some comments on this. I love this. In Austria, they say to fly the yellow Wetex, which is like a dish sponge rack. <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, it's a square, it's a square yellow flag. Um, there we go. Country of registration on the back, Q flag on the starboard mast. Excellent. I love it. I love it. And then 
When I was in the Caribbean, I'd also fly, uh, so you had, this is where you're gonna fly the courtesy flag after the Q flag comes down. But often I would fly, um, coming into Dutch and French countries in the Caribbean, I would fly the courtesy flag underneath the Q flag as I enter that country, just to be super geeky. Um, but you don't have to, it's just, a, it's just a nice one. Yes, it is a very nice view, isn't it? I love this. Um, um, Amanda and Chris, I might actually come here for all of my live streams now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, oh, I'm really gutted about that. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find this one because this is this was really cool. Um, Puppy shots, come on, there it is, there it is. Okay, all right, there we go. So this, and I'm gonna check. I don't do. Uh, yeah, do nothing. That's fine. Um, this is a time lapse of us coming in for our last our last section, all the way in underneath the Puppy shots bridge. Um, uh, on the way to Nelm. So we, we smoked all the way up here. Now, if I be a bit sneaky, there we go, uh, under the bridge. All right, now if I come back here, on the left here, uh, that's Plotje, okay? So Plotje is a port, it's quite a big port um, coming out of Croatia, uh, and it's uh, it's on the left there. So really, really important that, um, as I found out, uh, yeah. So, and then and then straight ahead in the middle there is turning left and going into, going into Nelm. So I went all the way up into Nelm, and I got on the radio trying to, because there's, there's nothing really marked anywhere. I used Google Maps to try and find the um, the, the harbour masters and things like that. And the, the depths were all a bit sketchy. And I was like, what's going on here? So um, as we come in, what did I have? I had Q.Porto HM locations here. Look at this one. So this is the dock I ended up on. But before that... I was floating around right where I'm pointing because that's where the Harbour Masters was. So I went in there and I was floating around there trying to get people on the radio, no one answering the radio, no no numbers working and now I'm Bosnia so my phone didn't have data. Um, and floating around there looking at where I could come in on a dock. It was all too shallow for me. So eventually I got someone's attention. They said, point it over there. I went to another one. He said, no, not that one. Points over there. I did get them on the radio eventually. But this is what it looks like it now. Um, and so I came over to this dock here, just around, and it was deep enough, okay? Just, I was drawing 1.2.2, .2, something like that. So it was about, I think I've got a shot of the depth sounder here, or I can't actually remember, but it was just deep enough for this. This was a, um, this was a, oh, there we go. Uh, so I draw 2.4 and I had about 2.6, 2.7, okay, with a moving tide. So that was where I went to there. And so then, uh, we went in and found the Harbour Master. Cool. So the process you've got to go through at this point is you've got to go see the Harbour Master. You've got to get the um, you got to get your crew list signed there and and that. And I've got to write out all the stuff that you've got to pay for your vignetta or your cruising permit because you've got to get a cruising permit because you're now in a new place. You get a cru cruising permit from that, um, and then they give you all these payments. So now this this is it. And you've got to go got to go over the bank. That's the bank. So if you're going into now, make sure you know when the bank closes because you can't pay card um, there. And if you want to pay in cash, you've got to pay in um, uh, marks, Bosnian marks. Okay, so Bosnian marks if you want to pay in cash. So we didn't have Bosnian marks. Um, so that was really you know important. So then I went into the bank. Luckily, it was closing in 15 minutes. And they gave me all, the, the, the Harbour Master gave me all of these payment slips. Okay, so I just take out a copy of my passport in there and I had all these different payment slips. It was actually a little bit ridiculous. Um, and it was very expensive, okay? So in comparison, um, looking down here to the Montenegro, all right, um, oh, that was 46 euros. It was 46 euros to stay the night in... Um, 46 euros to stay the night in Montenegro, at Porto Montenegro, for a 48-foot yacht uh, there. But then I had the customs, that's the Montenegro one. So this cost me 15 euros. So then I paid 15 euros for a cruising permit for over, overnight. Now, if, if you go seven days, or you can go 14 days, or you can go months, or whatever like that. Uh, and, uh, and they're, not, they're not, not quite as bad. Someone throw out a number how much you think it was for a 15-day vignetta and fees in Bosnia Herzegovina. Just give it to me in euros um, because it was it was mental. Um, it was mental. So uh, you pay all that and you get get that all paid. Okay, stamped away passports to customs. Yep, they go away, come back. Everyone does their thing, and you sign. You've got your cruising permit. You've got all your stuff. Um, and then you can leave that country uh, effectively. You say, right, I'm leaving on this date, and they know you're just coming in to go out because there's nothing to do in Nelm. Um, and 
and away we go. So then we take off back out underneath the Paddy Shots Bridge. Um, and as soon as we're out under the bridge, we're cruising off like, right, we've got to, we've got to go to plot check because we've got to check in. We're now checking into the new country. So you've got to go directly to your closest port to check in. And we've said our next port of call is plot check. Uh, we do that and 10 minutes under the bridge, here comes a boat out um, towards us relatively fast with its lights flashing. So now police have come out or police customs, um, uh, border control everyone, they've come out and they come out and see us and like, hey, what are you, you know, what are you doing? Um, and they say, you know, where are you going? Where have you been? All this. And there's there's a little bit of confusion going on there anyway. And we said, yep, we're going to plot chair now. Uh, so he, yeah, they came up alongside us. We had to stop. We've rolled in sail. He came up alongside us um, and wanted papers and everything. So we start handing over papers and we're at crew list and all sort of stuff. So, uh, and I have that all in one place. So always, always have that all in one place. So you can just hand it over. Copies are great because you, be completely honest, they didn't park very well next to us and they put a, a spring on from their midships right on our starboard quarter um, on the stern and it was just like, it was, it was it was bad. So I was like, hey, look, just take them and, and, and leave me alone. Not not leave me alone, take them and we'll, you know, they'll come back. So that's cool, we did that. Um, and then they said, yes, you must go go straight to Blodgett. Yeah, we know, we're going. So we they, they left us, we went and um, away we go. Uh, we got into Blodgett and then I had a bit of trouble in Blodgett because this was another thing that changed. And funnily enough, Coming out of split, they did not tell me this. They said, go straight to Nelm. Okay, I mean, you go to international waters and then you have to go straight to Nelm. So that's exactly what I did. Now, Plotche saw me, customs and um, police, and of course, saw me go through because radar and, you know, AIS and all this sort of stuff. Um, and when I got to Plotche, they were like, what did the police tell you? Did the police tell you something, you know, whatever? And I'm like, I, know, I went to the harbour master first, as normal. Then I went and found the police. Cool, that was great. Um, and and he's like, you were supposed to come in here. So technically, yes, I checked out of split. Um, I checked out of split, and I was I was gone. Okay, because Plotcher also don't handle the export. They don't have it. They're not wanting or doing handling export. Otherwise, you just sail straight down to Plotcher. You're right there. You do your export declaration at Plotcher. They'd manage that. You check out. You go to Nelm. You come back. You, ch- you know. You, you just do it like that. But it didn't work. Uh, so they, they wouldn't do it. We were calling the agent was calling. They wouldn't do it. So this is how we decided to do it. And then once I was at Plotcher, they said no. You must come every time you go to Nelm. We have an agreement with Bosnia Herzegovina because of the whole whatever. Everyone going into Nelm must come through Plotcher. So no matter what they sell, told you there, you must go through Plotcher. So once we did that. Okay, we're back out, and then we're out, and that was it. So uh, we actually spent a night in Plotcher on the harbour because we're exhausted by then. We just done 160 nautical miles or something like that, and that was that was done. So that was the process for the export. So no longer can we just go to 12 nautical miles and come back. Now we must go to another country. So um, I would, I mean, there's nothing in Nelm. It depends what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to uh, just get out of there or um, you know, get it done and get back because it's a timing thing, how's the weather, all of that. But if you want to you know, enjoy a little bit of cruising or something, I would much prefer going down to Dubrovnik. So if we look at the export from Dubrovnik, um, which is the one I did first, customs, uh, sorry, um, export, export agent, of course, same thing, and then onto the quarantine dock at um, uh, Dubrovnik. So that one looks like, uh, so you, you get your, then you go onto the Q dock here and it's in and around Gruj. Um, so I think I show it here. There we go. So you can see the yellow queue on the building. That's the quarantine. That's the quarantine area and customs and immigration uh, in Dubrovnik in the area of Gruj, Port of Gruj. So you go out and you go over to there um, and go up. You get to see the harbour master. Then you come and see the customs and the police. Uh, so police, immigration, and customs, and do your declaration there. And then again in Dubrovnik, they they brought. F- I don't know why, why they're having a laugh or whatever. They, four of them came on board. Um, and checked through, me and Martin are on board, so four of them came through, and they opened cupboards, and they, funnily enough, they didn't actually go in any of the cabins, the doors were closed too, but whatever. So, um, all done there, and and then we exited out of Dubrovnik. Now, be very careful. Um, there's a couple of islands just out from Savtart when you leave Dubrovnik, uh, so again, you must take the most direct route 
outside the islands. Now, a number of people I've known have been um, fined for cutting inside these small islands, um, and the uh, customs have picked them up and gone, right, we're, we're coming inside the small islands. Not allowed to do that. So be very careful of that one. Um, go, go straight out and go out beyond the islands and then down to Montenegro. Little thing they're just a bit picky about. So down to Montenegro, as you enter the harbour in uh, as you enter the, the like the Bay of um, Kotor, no, you don't actually go to the Bay of Kotor, sorry. I don't know what it's called, but you enter Montenegro, it's um, all the coastline that you go down before you enter the into the bay is all Croatia, and the big fort on the end is Croatia. Then the bay is actually split um, into Croatia, um, Montenegro. So just be careful you're watching that, and when you when you cross in, you're in, and then go to your port that you're going to you know, check into. Um, uh, and choose that port before you go, because you're going to have to say, on your crew list, uh, I'm going to Tivat, or I'm going to, I've forgotten all the other names right now, or I'm going to Kotor, whatever it is, you've got to, you've got to say which one you're going to, so ideally you'll know, call ahead, find out what times they're running, what times the harbour master's up, there's the harbour master that shuts, usually customs and immigration run, um, uh, customs and police, they're all night, they have to be, uh, but uh, on the quarantine dock, but not necessarily the harbour master, so you need that, otherwise you might have to stay on the quarantine dock or something like that. So. We went down in there, we checked in straight onto the quarantine dock in Tivat. All right, that's really important. So we were straight onto the quarantine dock, and then you follow your from, from there, Harbour Master, blah, blah, blah. And as I said, that was uh, 40, uh, 20, 2018, 18 euros or something like that to, to do the check in and out in the vineyards or overnight. Um, and 46 euros to spend the night in Porto Montenegro, which is lovely. It's lovely. So um, that was our process. That is the export process right there. Um, what else? What else? I'm, I've, I've been talking a lot. Um, if you have uh, any questions, let me know. Let me know right now, because I think we're, we're kind of there. <laughs> we're kind of there. So I'll 100% take questions and answers now. If you want them, uh, I'll leave that open for a couple of minutes, and then I'll be pretty much done, I think. So, <sighs> all right. I hope that was helpful. If you did find that helpful, please remember to like the video. I see I got 10 now, that's great, thank you very much. Um, you'll see in the chat there, there is also this uh, uh, super thanks, so you can thank me by um, buying, a, buying me a coffee or something like that, you can give, me a, give me a dollar, whatever it is, this is my latest craze, I get, get, get really excited when someone gives me a dollar or a euro. Um, so throw that on there and I'll get to the questions, I'm kind of just buying time now. Um, okay, Anna's got a good one, she's always, always got it. Anna's part of our team here at 45 Degrees Sailing, she does a lot in the background that no one ever really understands or knows about or sees, um, <laughs> so she's always prompting me for a couple of good questions. So three biggest tips. Um, Three biggest tips. Number one, be organized. All right, organized. So as soon as you've gone and you, and you know your, your final invoice is going through, start planning your export. Start knowing exactly what you need to do. Um, get in touch with an agent. Make sure your paperwork's all in order because once it, once it comes through, um, and if you're thinking, right, well, I've got to change registration. If you change to an Australian flag, that can take over a month. Okay, so get onto things straight away straight away okay so three big six is what number one is that uh number two would be um tidy boat all right tidy boat and organized um remember just know your distances and understand the weather especially if you're doing this in winter it can be very serious so uh you know plan plan that and that's another thing about being organized if you're organized you go right good weather window and third to biggest tip and this is actually the the 100 percent best one uh, because uh my crew member on my second export was uh was Aaron, my cousin Aaron. uh first one was mahina um on the second one we got onto the dock and split and we did our provisioning there at konzum and we ordered two meals hot meals two like uh, one one meal for each of us there and one meal for each of us here we got poke bowls and stuff so that we could just sail and eat and that lasted us all through until about 9 a.m the next day uh these big sandwiches from somewhere in split Aaron can tell me where that was and then a poke bowl from that uh that place we get poke bowls so that that was a that actually made it for me everyone knows i get seasick so um that was a that was a huge thing for me uh, so those are my three biggest tips, and the last one being the absolute best. <laughs> All right, um, Graham T, this is great. I have questions, but more regarding a non-EU resident purchasing a boat to keep in charter in Croatia. Okay, cool, 
Cool. Um, well, look, throw them, throw them down, Graham. We've got, we've got a little bit of time left. I'm not going to hang around for longer than, um, longer than 6.30, but uh, put them down because I can possibly answer some of those as well. They may be beneficial to everyone. Um, are there boats to buy that are not in charter? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. There are boats to buy that are not in charter. Um, there's not as many, and it's a... Uh, but there are, there certainly are. Um, one of my one of my very good very good clients and now friends and everything, he's coming on a flotilla, uh, David Llewellyn, he's, he bought his boat, that was a private boat that he got to buy over here, and it was actually the best option because you get straight on it, there was none of this available at the end of the charter season. There is definitely private boats to buy. I've got a list, um, there's at least 12 or 15 that I've got on a list from one of the agents that I, that I work with here uh, that are ready to buy now. Um, and in Croatia, sorry Chris, I did, I did, see, did see all of that there. Um, Graham, same here. Oh, okay. About those, about this, um, the non EUs. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, throw, throw them down. Throw them down. Something's going on with my bandwidth. Uh oh. Tell me if the stream's not any good because my bandwidth just. Oh, no. I think. Oh, we're back up. We're back up. Just someone give me a thumbs up if we're back up on the stream because my bandwidth just went and now it's back. Um,. Crossing the 12 nautical mile line on a charter boat does not have any repercussions, right? <laughs> depends on your charter contract. It depends on your charter contract. Um, you probably shouldn't. Uh, if you're if you're in for a charter in Croatia, you sh you shouldn't you shouldn't really. Um, but in saying that, you can sail from. Like, I mean, if you went across that horn from, if you're going from Vis to um, Pelagruja, you're going from Croatia to Croatia. If you went across that horn, I don't think anyone's going to care. But you know, just just be check with your charter company. Uh, we can we can check with your charter company if you want to really want to go out that far for some reason. It's a long way out, man. It takes it takes a long time to get out there. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that one. All right, we got streams all good. Thank you. It's good. Excellent. All fine. Excellent. Okay, so. Um, okay, so keeping flagged in Croatia requires having a company set up in Croatia, or can a charter company cover that? So yes, it requires setting up a company in Croatia. Most charter schemes um, that do a buying or whatever, they'll, they'll have an accountant's deal and they'll set you up a company here in Croatia so that the boat is the company's boat and then the, the agreement is between your boat's company and the charter company to do the work because all... Uh, commercial boats must be, you know, that they must be in a, in a company for Croatia. So, um, yes, but the the charter company can organise it for you. Often they're, they're doing a deal like that. I've got definitely one that we use that um, I can help you out with that um, and set you up with a good accountant that's in the nautical industry, knows exactly what's going on. But yes, they will do that. Um, do you have an estimate of total fees added to the cost of a boat that leaves Croatia? You have an estimate of total fees added to the cost of a boat that leaves Croatia. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't. Um, I mean, it doesn't actually cost you anything to like. I mean, if you if you just it depends if you've done all your export and everything like that. Uh, if if you're talking about fees for the export um, and the agent and all that, that's different. But just to to sail out, like I can. Like, so if I jump on on a private boat, whatever, Quills or David's or whatever like that, and we, we sail down to Dubrovnik, we check out a Dubrovnik, and we sail to um, to Montenegro, or Italy, whatever, there's no there's no fees on that. There's no fees on that. You just you just go in and you, you go. Effectively, the vignetta, the cruising permit that you have for being in, the, in there um, is paying for those sorts of things. And like 55 euros for the year. So that was that, was that. but it doesn't really, yeah, no, no real need for, for that one there. All right, excellent. Um, so I think that's, oh, we've got another one. Martin Gannon, sorry. Can't see the coffee hat to buy you a coffee, Martin, one of our top fans. Um, I, 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 I don't actually know how it works, to be honest. Um, no, it's not buy a coffee. I think there's a, there's a um, say thanks, right next to the live chat. There's like a thanks or a, um, a, a super thanks, or I, I, I don't really know. But no, I appreciate, I appreciate the, the sentiment, thank you. Um, okay, cool. Well, look, guys, that has been um, it's been awesome. Okay, one more. Keep them coming. This is great. It's not it's not cold out here. It's actually very lovely. Oh, that's not it. 
Um, what was the difference in cost that you talked about from Montenegro to now? Oh, good call. Thank you very much. Okay, so no one, no one threw a guess in like uh, a guess in like that. So to check in and out of Naum, um it was where's my where's my thingy? Where's my Naum payment thingy? Um, all of this added up to four hundred and something Bosnian marks, which was two hundred and twenty euros. 220 euros for checking in and out of Naum and getting a 15 day cruising permit. Just, you, you couldn't even cruise for 15 days in Naum. But that, yeah, and that was the minimum. So, yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Do you know anyone who has done this and is it actually worth it? I'd be looking at using a boat for three to six weeks a year. I really enjoyed the shoulder season and prefer seven. 100%. I know, I know a number of people that have done this. Um, it's, is it worth it? Um, yes, I think it's worth it. Uh, it is not, if you buy one boat, depending on the cost of the boat and the deal you get and all that sort of stuff, you buy one boat, sail it three to six weeks, it's not going to make you millions of dollars, uh, but it is realistic if you have a good charter company and they maintain your boat well and that they're, you know, they, they do all these things well, give you a good heads up and they, they have better clients, things like that. If you do that, yeah, you can pay off your boat in five years um, uh, and you know if you're buying a new boat or you can cover your costs for your yacht which is a hell of a lot better than um, having it sit in the marina all year but one thing I'm, I'm very very careful about is if you love your boat be careful about that one um, it's worth it to have a boat to sail on but if you love your boat and it goes into charter you're just going to stress about it uh, whereas if it's like right this is an investment or it's a stepping stone to another boat or whatever it is or just I want to have a boat that I like you know then yeah I, I totally think it's worth it um, especially in a good uh, a good charter company that's going to take care of it and, and communicate well with you some of the bigger charter companies um, and I'm not naming anyone um, some of the bigger charter companies it's just it's a numbers game and they're just pushing them through and the staff uh, rotate like this it's crazy whereas um, the ones we work with we tend to um, have longer serving staff so that they they really care about the boats um, yeah all right I think unless another question pops in in the next 15 seconds um, I might call it I'm starting to get hungry um, and no one showed up with a drink just not happy about that. <laughs> all right, look, um, thank you all for watching. If you uh, have not subscribed already, please remember, subscribe to the channel uh, and get more updates about this. Now, next week's live stream. Next week's live stream is about the Sharpen Up Flotilla. I'm actually going to have, I think that's right, let me check my calendar. If Mrs. Anna's there, she can just... Um, she can just uh, confirm that for me right now. 17th, the 24th, yes. So we're going to be on. So our, our float, Sharpen Up Flotilla that ran last year, uh, the first one, I'm going to get a bunch of the crew that were on it that brought boats or, um, or came along. Um, and we're going to get them online and to, to share their experiences and their thoughts about the, about the flotilla, answer any questions. And I'm going to grill them as well to see um what they what they really learned from it what they enjoyed and um uh and what could make it better for this for this round coming up in um may may so the next flotilla is running 13 13 to 20 may uh, there is one boat left that you could charter within that um i think it's a hansa 460 so if you want to get on that that would be uh great and you can join us um join us in the flotilla we've got a number of owner boats coming and um it's going to be a lot of fun a lot of fun so that's next week's live stream um 4 30 friday um are there any advantages to finding a boat in croatia versus other countries um Honestly, for me, the main advantage of doing this in Croatia is that Croatia is such an amazing place to cruise, and there's so many places to go, um, and it's just, it's really good. I found the um, the cost of work and maintenance on boats here to be pretty good relative to the other areas, um, and and this all year round season to be able to to be able to sail and enjoy it, uh, that's the main advantages. Um, other advantages about Croatia. There's a lot of boats here. There's, there's been a lot of boats here for the last few years, but um, now they're starting to spread out again. Turkey's picking up again. Um, but I think I think just because there's a high turnover of boats and a lot of charter boats in here, it's one of the biggest places for the industry at the moment to buy. So yeah, um, that, that's what I'd say. 
Um, I'm going to send you an email. Thank you. <laughs> Greatly appreciate the info. No, you're welcome. very welcome, Graham. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> go keep your drink, mate. Yeah, I'm going to have to go get it myself. And yes, it's the slow till next week. All right. More options in Croatia. Actually, yes. Yeah, so Dawn, um, Dawn makes a good point there because they were searching, um, her and Aquila were searching. They said this in one of their interviews. Um, and they can, you can actually watch that video. I'll, um, I'll link it somewhere or I'll get Anna to link it somewhere. Um, that we did a live stream with them on their boat on the way back down from, um, from Kirk. And they said they've been looking for a long time, over a year, I think he said, Dawn. Um, uh, and then looking in Croatia, there was just so many more options of boats and, um, and a, ra- a variety as well. So I think, I think that's the big one at the moment. And, and as far as charter boats in Croatia, um, they're turning over quite fast because they keep buying new boats and um, there's, there's, there's a lot available. So yeah, that's the one. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to hit the button in a second um, and going to cut this one off. So have a great night and I'm going to go enjoy my anniversary and everything like that. And I hope to see you all at the live stream next week um, and keep those questions coming. If you want to charter a boat here in Croatia, um, jump onto our website and put an inquiry for planning, planning your charter. We can help you uh, charter here or in Greece or in Italy or in Sicily or the Caribbean, whatever it is. But um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching and we will see you in the next live stream. <laughs> Thanks, mate.